All right, welcome back to the PRZ channel for another live recording, this time of our Black Thorn division between Caracasa and Fako Lako, which is going to be an interesting one as Caracasa is a PWC veteran. He's been around for several seasons already. And Fako Lako, on the other hand, is a complete newcomer to the league. He has made his debut in the pre-season, off-season event, whatever. So yeah, that's going to be very interesting. The signature for Caracasa is the Dadan Spars right here, which is a very versatile, very good signature in my opinion. And for Fakolaku, oh, it's uh, obviously it's the Jolteon, right? So yeah, that's um, two very threatening signatures. Um, this is very interesting to me is that um, Fakolako does have a really scary team. Uh, he has the uh, Tapu Koko com combined with uh, several Iron Mons that will get a boost from the electric terrain. But what he also does have is he does have a Rain in the back. He does have um, Pelipper with with Kingdra, which he did not bring, which is very interesting to me. I know Karakasa has been uh, prepping for it. Uh, he brought the Vaporeon specifically for the Rain Sweepers. So yeah, that is uh, something. And yeah, we have the uh, lead matchup right here, which is definitely in Fakolako's favor, I would say. Just because it uh, Coco can for sure take one uh, return from Lopani if it has to, and uh, obviously can hit back with the super effective Dazzling Gleam. But yeah, Karakasa, uh, just looking at it, uh, will struggle a little bit with this uh, Coco, it looks like, because he does not have a ground type with him, doesn't have a, an electric immunity at all, so that's um, going to be annoying for potential Volt switches that he will have to deal with. But yeah, we will see how he wants to deal with that. But yeah, this Lopani looks super annoying for Fakolako to switch into. Like, um, normal moves are just completely free against... Nah, not, not, not entirely, but pretty free. Um, the same goes for fighting type attacks, because, like, Haolucha and uh, Coco don't really want to switch into any uh, close combats, even if they resist it. I feel like um, Caracasa's Corsola is gonna have its hands full dealing with uh, Iron Boulder and Halucha potentially. I think um, that's gonna be a challenge to pull off both of them. <laughs> and yeah, but we are gonna see how that will go. So I wonder who is uh, thinking for so long here. That's uh, interesting. It's a long turn one. Uh, all right. Decides to switch into Sableye. Um, okay. That's interesting. So Sableye, I mean, I guess... Um, what is the problem? Okay. Um, yeah, Sableye uh, does not is not immune to the fighting type move uh, of Lopani. Obviously, I hope he did not does not forget that. In, indeed, it is super effective on Sableye, even though it's a ghost type, just because the Scrappy will ignore the um, immunity here. But if he did forget it, he's gonna remember now because he just ate this fake out. Uh, oh yeah, he did switch into Holucha now. Interesting. That's probably not the switch he wanted, though. Um, so, so maybe he did forget about the immunity because he was fearing the um, the close combat now. But I mean, obviously, Caracasa doesn't didn't want want to go for it because he was fearing the priority will always appear. Pretty obvious. Um, and now he wasted his um, electric seed right here because I don't think. Holucha will be able to set up on Vaporeon. I don't think so, at least. Vaporeon could potentially have Scald, could have Ice Beam, could have the new Fairy move, which it does actually have. And yeah, that means that I think... I'm not sure, but I think Vaporeon will be able to take a plus to um, close combat here. And... Um, <laughs> especially if it hurts itself in confusion. <laughs> and that will be... Uh, 
that will be the first kill for the annoying fish right here. Fish dog. Fakuloko saying oof in the chat. Obviously, that's uh, that was unfortunate. The um, hurt in confusion. But then again, this Vaporeon doesn't really pose the biggest threat to his team. Um, it's it's more so, I would say, that he set up a little bit um, premature here. Like, why would you set up on a Vaporeon? That's not going to go well 90% of the time if you have, like, seven electric types to deal with it. But, yeah, um, that's how it goes sometimes. He has one less threat, but he still has plenty of uh, annoying ones for Karakasa to deal with. So <laughs> this game is uh, long from over. But what I will say is um, Vaporeon looks kind of annoying for him to switch into if it also has a water move. Because it does not have a water resist left, and like several months are also weak to this uh, fairy type move that it does have. So yeah, looks like an annoying potential stab combo for him to to deal with. Krakasa told me before this match that um, the Vaporeon does take electric type attacks pretty well. But does it really like Jolteon in, in the um, terrain? Oh, it does get rising voltage as well. I did not know. I thought it did get that. Jesus Christ, that's so strong. And Karakasa doesn't have doesn't have an electric resist. What the fuck? He does not. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. So this is gonna be a one hell of a nuke. Why does he switch out here? Oh, he does have... Ah, oh, obviously, that would be Terra Ground. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't expect that. Yeah. Oh, but... Okay. He does elect to Baton Pass out here. Well, he still has the ground typing, just in case this thing is choiced. It uh, might be able to roost up one more time. Might also be faster than the Sableye and be able to roost up on that. But yeah, this Hydro was still annoying for him. Now he gets to choose what he wants to do. Could go Dragonite, could go Lopani. Oh, could obviously also go into a Reggie Lecky if he wants to. Um, which, the Reggie Lecky is super good for him, but it, he has to get rid of this Jolteon first, right? Just because that thing can... Um, switch into the electric type moves right now and it might also be choice scarfed that's a, that's definitely a possible against um, the annoying Regieleki but yeah we will we will see he is thinking yeah this is not it just does go into Lopani well yeah it makes sense he can um, probably triple axel if he has it that should kill I think it's also probably gonna kill Sableye if he gets three hits. Not sure, but it. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, he does switch. Oh no, he just goes for Fake Out. Man, he just switched Coco into Triple Axel. I can't believe it. Like, imagine this has Triple Axel. I think that's definitely gonna be a two two hit KO. But, huh? It is what it is. Now he can just U-turn on out of here. But yeah, it definitely looks like the Jolteon is going to be... These two things are going to be huge threats for Karakasa. Or against Karakasa, I should say. The Corsola, I think, might be able to deal with Iron Boulder. Not sure, but I think so. But yeah, you can see how much this team revolves around the electric terrain. That's crazy. Every single Mon benefits from it. The Jolteon does. Oh! <laughs> okay. He stays in to take the return, but U-turns instead of Dazzling Gleaming. Interesting choice right there. And now, if he goes into Jolteon, we will know it's Scarfed. And then uh, Karakasa can decide what he wants to do. Uh, let's see. No, he goes into Jugulus. Which is arc walk drive speed. Interesting. All right. So yeah, we know the hurricane is coming here. He could even could even go into Reggie Lecky to resist the hurricane here. Um, 
because I think even with the speed boost, a lucky if it's timid, it's gonna be faster, I think. But yeah, we don't know. Goes into Vaporeon. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense too. Oh, he's Meteor Beam. Jesus. That's so scary. But maybe Karakasa can just protect here because I... Does this thing get Nasty Plot? I'm not even sure. He does protect. Yeah. Yeah, he's... So he, we know he doesn't have an item anymore as well. And the Meteor Beam didn't even do that much damage. I think Vaporeon is just a beast, man. That thing will, will take a Dark Pulse. If it doesn't get flinched down, it's going to be able to stall out the electric terrain here. Uh, speaking of, did we, did we confirm if this thing carries the uh, electric stone? Uh, whatever. <laughs> you know, guys know what I mean. Oh, it goes for a luring voice here. Okay, that means, yeah, okay. Oh, that was that was kind of smart, but is it going to kill now? I'm not sure. Oh, it is going to kill, but yeah, now it just gets out speed. Yeah, that was, that was smart playing around the protect like this, but... Well, now it can go into Lopani and for sure get a kill with close combat. He just goes Lopani and clicks close combat. There's nothing he can do. Goes to Iron Boulder. Oh, oh, he's the this item. Why does he go for return? Oh no, does he not have close combat? Interesting, interesting choice. Well, that went pretty well for Fakolako. Goes into Corsola. Oh, and he close combat. That's big. That's big. That was a nice play. But yeah, as I said in the beginning, this game is far from over. Even though. Um, Karakasa had the very good start. Though I want to say that uh, Fakolako's team is pretty chipped. Like the uh, And now this Iron Boulder lost its item too. This thing lost its item. Yeah, this is looking this is looking deadly. Oh, and the rocks are so huge. So if he's not heavy duty boots, which I believe he is, um, he's not going to get uh, electric terrain anymore. I think that's how it works, right? This thing is going to die before the ability activates. That's going to be huge for him, because these uh, things won't get the boost again. Yeah, I think the low pony is just going to clean this up eventually. There is the um, looming Will-O-Wisp still, but then he also has uh, Dragonite waiting in the back here. Though he is still a little bit... Annoyed by the fact that um, he does have Regilecki with him, which can't do anything, even though it's on approaching late game because Jolteon is standing in its way. That's just a pain of having Regilecki, honestly. If you have that thing, that's that's why would you ever bring it? It's, it's so bad, you can't. <laughs> I have no words for it, honestly. <laughs> Man, what a terrible one. This, this team is so chipped, it's end game, and it still has zero ability to do anything. But yeah, out comes this thing, which, oh, surprise, surprise. Oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> how strong is Dragonite? <laughs> what the hell? How does that make any sense? From 88%, what the hell? <laughs> Fakolako says no way in the chat. <laughs> so that must be Adam and Choice Band. Insane. Jesus, Dragonite is a monster. Yeah, now he sacks off the uh, Dadan Spars, but... Oh, oh, this is... Oh, right, it's Mega Sableye. I, I didn't... I completely forgot. Oh, it's Calm Mind. But yeah, that's... Honestly, what is he doing? Like, he's going to get O-Code by Close Combat any day. Uh, unless he doesn't have it, of course. Oh, now he Baton Passes and he's faster. That's not ideal, but... I mean... What is he going to do? Like, he just... He just can't go for differential here. He has to go sack his Dragonite now, or just try that. Does have the Will-O-Wisp, so that was that was good for him. But 
Oh, we just get the para here. So what he cannot afford to do is um, let the Sableye recover back up to full. That's why I thought he should go into Dragonite. Yeah, which he does now. Yeah, that's very smart. Because with Dragonite, he can probably go for Outrage now. Um, and uh, this thing can definitely not recover up on it. And then eventually he's going to clean up with uh, Lopani. Yeah. Does, yeah, absolutely. Jesus Christ, is this thing insane, man. How the hell? Yeah, he is boots on Coco, as I suspected, but he's... Yeah, well, what is he going to do? He doesn't have roost, apparently, and he's just going to lose to something. Yeah, the uh, Reggie Lecky also cleans up now. Now that um, Jolteon is gone. Oh, that, he does have Roost. Interesting. Losing to Para hurts, says Fakolak on the chat. Okay, how did he lose to Para? <laughs> Caracasa being Caracasa says, you, you were never in a winning position. <laughs> we were never friends. Um, <laughs> how, how did he lose to Para? This, is he saying he did Willow Wisp again, predicting the switch, which would be kind of random? I mean, even if he did Willow Wisp again, he was still not in a winning position because no way, even when it's burned, you saw it did over 81% already, so you cannot uh, recover up on it. And eventually you're going to be in a position where Lopani has your checkmate, where, where it just comes in after something dies. And uh, you will get O-Code by the close combat. You cannot switch into it. Uh, so he would have lost regardless. So it doesn't matter. Or not, not, not saying it doesn't matter. It definitely mattered for differential probably. But as Karakasa points out, he was not in a winning position regardless. But yeah, he definitely got a little bit unlucky here. Switches into Iron Boulder. <laughs> Jesus, we get a kill by this thing. Wow, that's also pretty bulky, I have to say. Impressively bulky, actually. Only taking like 25% from a Mighty Cleave, or whatever the move is called. Mighty Cleave, indeed. <laughs> Fakonako is really salty. GG. Hex wins again. Okay. Welp, I guess. Um, that means that... Yeah, that's, that's a shame, honestly. For stats, we prefer the games to be played out. And honestly, I gotta be honest, he didn't... He didn't have much to complain about there. Like, something happened in the early game, I think. Oh yeah, obviously the uh, Holucha hurting itself. That, that made a difference. But also, I wanna say, it didn't make that much of a difference. Because, first of all, it Vaporeon probably lifts the hit at plus two and just knocks it out. And Vaporeon being low is not that big of a deal because like, you didn't have a big problem dealing with Vaporeon regardless. Maybe it was annoying for Iron Jugulus at one stage, but Iron Jugulus still had um, this thing to deal with, which was at full health and definitely one-shotted it. So yeah, I think um, while it was annoying, it didn't really decide the outcome is my estimation but yeah congrats to carcasa for a very strong debut here in the second division that was well played and uh, dragonite is a monster absolutely insane vaporeon even though it's a little piece of uh, uh whatever it, it, it did well the uh, little thingy here did also do very well and lopani was a threat as well nice game for Fakolako, the Chugulus was doing very well with the Meteor Beam set, especially on the Protect. That was a nice play. And yeah, he probably should um, be a little bit more patient, I would say, with his stuff. Like, why would you go into Halucha this early when it can't really sweep? But yeah, that's what happens sometimes. GG, guys. That was fun. And see you in the next one.